A lot of times when I watch these videos, I just react to them without doing any research. I just watch what's going on on the screen and give you my opinion. Now, when I saw this, I thought, how in the world does a plane drive straight into another plane? I assumed it was a military operation because that's really the only time you'll ever see two planes doing any type of a takeoff or landing or any type of operations on a runway at the same time. So I assumed that, but I thought, how in the world is this even possible? So on this one, I had to do a little bit of research. Sometimes you'll see in military units where they're doing things like having two planes take off or two planes land at the same time in a team like this. To a regular airline pilot, that looks like a lot of fun, especially if you got to do it with someone like the Blue Angels. I've been a fan of the Blue Angels since I was a kid. I've always wanted to go fly on one of their jets. I've never been invited to go do it. And while I can promise that I won't cry if I ever do get the opportunity to do it, I can't promise the no puking or passing out based on some of the maneuvers I've seen them do, I've gotten soft lately. Anyway, when I initially saw this video, I thought that that was maybe the situation where the plane in front actually aborted their takeoff. I thought maybe it was a short runway, so they aborted because they're not going really fast. And then the plane behind them, for some reason, just had a slow reaction and didn't stop in time. This took place in Khartoum. And I hope I'm saying that right. I'm sure the people in the comments will let me know. But this is a chart here. And as you can see, the runway is roughly 10,000 feet long and 148 feet wide. So all really normal in the grand scheme of runways. And you see right here, the elevation is 1,260 feet, which is a normal elevation above sea level. The reason that matters is because as you get to a higher elevation airport, somewhere like Quito, uh, which is in Ecuador, it's close to 8,000 feet if I remember correctly. So as you're coming in, your speed across the ground is a lot faster because the air is thinner. So you have to be going faster in order to keep the plane flying. If you're at a lower elevation airport, the air is denser, and so your speed across the ground is slower. So that does matter. That, that few knots does make a difference. So while I was doing this research, I found this video, which is even crazier than the first one. Now, I don't know for a fact that this is real, but this apparently is what happened before that plane ran into the back of the other plane. And as most of you know, I admit to doing a lot of terrible landings in my career, but I've never done something that was this wildly unstable, even as a student pilot. It appears this video has been slowed down, but you can see how it is hitting on the nose first, then bouncing back up in the air again. And this is a perfect example of porpoising mixed in with the wings not being level or stable at all. Now on a normal 10,000 foot runway, you could probably save that landing. I always advise in the event that that were to happen, typically that's never gonna happen on a larger aircraft like this, but in the event that is gonna happen, better to just do a go around, come back in and land because it is hard to save those porpoising landings. They can be saved, especially on a runway that's 10,000 feet. I just don't recommend doing it. And I especially don't recommend doing it while there's another plane directly in front of you because then it ends up looking like this. So my initial thought was that that pilot in the front aborted the landing, causing the plane behind it to slowly abort their landing and then ran into them. That's why I initially thought it had happened, but I was completely wrong. The plane in front had landed and was rolling out and at a decently fast pace for that other plane to land and stop and slow down behind them. Obviously, we don't have rear view mirrors, so we can't see what's going on. And the plane that was behind them is not going to transmit that their landing is going wrong to make the plane in front go forward. They have their hands full trying to get the plane on the ground. What they should have done is go back up in the air and then come back in and try it again. That was a wild landing to try to save. I can't believe both of the pilots were up there trying to save it. Now, what I do know is that in Sudan, the one of the languages that they speak there is English. So if you are flying with these pilots and you're looking for a nickname or you have a nickname, please DM me. I'm very curious to if these pilots got a nickname after this because it is very impressive to not only ruin your plane that you're landing, but ruin another plane which had nothing to do with the incident. Luckily and incredibly, nobody was killed during this. You don't normally see two planes mangled up like that and nobody was killed, which I thought was amazing. Well, I bet if you were a nervous flyer and you were on that flight, listening to your plane shooting out balls of fire out the engine while the whole plane is rumbling and shaking would probably not make you feel more comfortable. What's crazy is that even while this sounds 
crazy what's going on. It would be very uncomfortable. It's actually not really that dangerous. But I'm sure while you're sitting there with your face mashed up against the window crying, seeing this, you would be incredibly nervous and rightfully so. I thought I would do something a little bit different for this. Instead of talking about what causes that and what that's all about, I would tell you what would be going on up front from the pilot's perspective on how we would handle this type of a situation. This is an example of a checklist that we would pull up in a condition like this. So you see right here, abnormal noises are heard. Yep, I would say that applies. And then flames in the exhaust are reported. You know 100% the flight attendants are going to be calling, but you don't even really have to do that. The pilots can hear the rumbling of the plane and an explosion like that, plus all of our instruments are going to be indicating something's going wrong. But for sure, somebody is going to be screaming and reporting that's what's going on. So the first step here is to pull back the power. We aren't even shutting down the engine right now. We're just seeing if we can get that explosion noise to stop. So let's assume that it works. So we're going to go to step three. So everything looks good, so we go to step four. Four says, slowly push the power back up. Then five, run at a reduced power so the big explosion isn't happening. And if that's working, so you're gonna leave that engine running and you're gonna probably come back around and land at that airport or a nearby airport. The engine is still producing some thrust, it's not making the banging noise, so why not let it run and give you some power? Now, if the banging and that noise doesn't stop, then it's gonna direct you to go and shut down the engine. That's the obvious thing. So if that engine gets shut down, there's no reason to panic. All of these commercial aircraft are designed to be able to fly fine on one engine. 50% of the power is basically how it's worded. So on this plane, one engine, 50%, it's able to fly fine. On my plane, two engines, and we do all kinds of training for this, flying around on, for us, two engines. And we do training for coming in and trying to land on two engines. We do training on coming in to land on two engines and it doesn't work all kinds of crazy stuff. And the same thing is done for pilots when they're flying a plane with two engines. You have one engine shut down, you try to shoot an approach to come in and land. For some reason, something goes wrong. So they show you how the plane is gonna fly fine was they come in and try to land and they can't go back up in the air, come back around and try to land again. So all of it's gonna be fine. One scenario, you're gonna have the banging slow down and stop, and then it's gonna be flying, you're gonna come back in and land. The other scenario is they're gonna shut down that engine and one side of the plane is gonna be quiet and then you're gonna come back around and land that way. Now, I am sure some of you are watching wondering what can cause this terrifying noise and rattling. Realize that this was something that used to happen a lot back in the day, but the engineers have designed these engines now to almost never have this situation. I've never had the situation like this on, on this type of an engine before, but in modern aircraft, what, a situation that might cause something like this is a bird strike. Because what's caused by it is basically the airflow isn't properly going through the jet. The jet isn't having, there's different stages of compression. So if you have something like a bird strike, which bends some of the fans that are in the front of that engine, then the blades aren't doing what they need to do. And so it can create a proper improper flow of the airflow. And when that happens, then you can get this type of an explosion thing called a compressor stall. These blades look like a pretty simple design, but they are super precise. So if you get them bent or messed up, they can create that super loud banging noise that sounds like your plane is going to explode or rattle apart. What's crazy is that it's really not that big of a deal like as much as it would sound like. I agree that if I was sitting there and I heard that explosion, I would be very nervous. I would probably end up climbing over the people next to me to look out the window to see what was going on. Once I saw that what was going on, you'd probably within a few seconds hear that engine start to come back, right? When you hear that engine coming back, I would go, okay, that's probably, and I'm just guessing here that this is what this is because I can't see the engine instruments, but I'm guessing this is a compressor stall. So I would hear that engine go back and I would think, okay, I know exactly what's going on. However, if you're a nervous flyer, the loudness of that explosion noise, according to what I was told it sounds like, is very loud and it shakes the whole plane. So if I were on that plane, I would be nervous. If you're a nervous flyer, you're gonna be freaking out. The thing that would calm you down is that if you looked over and saw me in my pilot uniform with my phone out starting a vlog because that's probably what I would do in this situation because it's really not a big deal. I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, 
keep the blue side up.